Hello friends, welcome to Being Techie. In this session, I am going to explain the new concept called Environments in ASP.NET Core. Environments is the new concept introduced in ASP.NET Core which provides an ability to define the application behavior across different environments. In the past, we used to have a different transformation files in web.config and where we used to uh, mention our uh, connection strings or uh, application keys or different keys and these keys were read in into the application and we used to write a program according to the key value. So this used to be kind of a hassle. What ASP.NET Core team did was they introduced the uh, they introduced base interfaces which provides direct access to the environment variable called ASP.NET Core underscore environment. This is the standard name they have been they they are using in the current uh, version. So whatever the value is provided for this variable will be uh, treated as that particular environment, and the code uh, written specific to a, a value of an environment gets executed based on the current value. The application is residing in and by default uh, ASP.NET Core supports three values the production staging and development these are the common environment names used across different projects in different companies but of course we can have our own name like custom name it could be uh, integration environment or like uh, user acceptance environment it could be anything so these can be defined as well but within the code uh, of uh, ASP.NET Core assemblies, these three are already defined. And let's see what are all the different methods and the API available to support this environment concept. So primarily, there is one interface called iHosting environment. Uh, I'll show you in the sample where we get this interface uh, instance. So this interface has a, a, a multiple methods like ease development, ease staging, and ease production. These are like direct method, doesn't take any parameter. As I mentioned in the previous slide, these three methods correspond to the three values, three default values supported by the framework without any uh, extra uh, environment name added. Also, we can, have, we can uh, add our own environment name so for that reason we have another method is environment and where we pass the environment name since we are defining this name extra environment name we need to pass this while checking the environment name within the code i'm going to explain the different ways this environment variable can be used or these methods can be used within the code uh, to support different kind of features so let's jump into the sample I have created, created to demonstrate this concept. So this is the plain uh, default ASP.NET Core application, MVC application. I have used the de default template with a UI. If you look at the startup folder, the constructor itself has an interface, high hosting environment. This itself is injected by the ASP.NET dependency injection framework and this will have all the methods required for, for the application to decide which to or to determine which environment the application is currently running in. And the default template itself you, makes use of these methods to, de, to define the behavior specific to an environment. For example, if it is a development environment, like gather these application inside settings. And similarly, if it is a development environment, show the developer exception page. Or if it is not a development environment, use the standard error page because we don't want to show the uh, uh, developer level details in a production or a staging environment. So these are the different ways we can use. And also we can use uh, by default we can use for the configuration file as well if you I think this is the classic example if you remember in the past we used to have a, a web.config file and it used to have all the connection strings or different uh, configurable values inside the file 
as you know in this asp.net core framework the web.config file is like more used very le uh, less often and the uh, json configuration files have been introduced and they are more often used so let's say you have defined your own connection string in application string application settings json file so the default one can reside in the default app settings json file and you can create a different json file with the environment name inside it so the order based on the order the latest environment name json file takes a priority and let's say you have an app settings dot production dot json file and the connection string from that file will be picked when that environment name is set as production in the production server so i'm going to demonstrate how this environment variable can be set in the iis so that we can see both production behavior and the development environment behavior so to demonstrate this i'm going to use the error functionality if you look at this piece of code it it checks whether the environment is development then it will show the developer exception page or else it shows the standard error page and by the way another important point is by default the if you if there is no environment variable set then the environment value is production this value is hard coded in inside the as assembly of asp.net core since we are demonstrating error functionality let's throw an exception explicitly inside the controller just for demonstration purpose i am using this about page of the default asp.net home page throw new invalid operation exception let's put some data inside this testing environment variable this is already published in a local iis this is environments virtual application pointing to that particular sample since we made the changes let's publish it again All right, this is published. Let's browse the application, or we can directly open the localhost and we're on months. This is our default asp.net template project ui we made change in about so this is giving a standard error page of the application remember what i said by default the environment value is set as production inside the code if there is nothing specified by the server or the iis now i'll show you how to set that value to other than production in our case we want to set it as development to see the devel developer related error page let's go to the iis configuration editor there is one section a system dot web server slash asp net core and let's select this web config as well inside this environment variables add the one which we want to use our application pnet core underscore environ environment let's put the value development Let 
search that line. Refresh. Go to home. Now click again on the abort. Now let's see. We are seeing a different kind of exception page. This is the one you being used by developer. It clearly tells what is the exception, where it occurred, or what is the stack trace. So why our, our application is behaving differently this time? Because of the environment variable we set in the IIS that is used by the application. If you look at the startup code again, it checks whether the environment is development and the, in the, this time it is yes and it goes to this block of code. And if you are debugging it, Visual Studio uses launchsetting.json file. Even this file will have an ASP.NET Core environment variable value. So whatever the value we specify here, this will be used throughout the application. For the different profiles, we can set the different environment variable. And these profiles are listed here. We can directly modify from the JSON file or we can even Visual Studio provides a UI to set, it, set this up. Here you can modify the value. And these are considered environment variables so you, you can even add your own variable and this is again a different topic altogether but it supports uh, defining other environment variables as well. So this is the concept of environments introduced in new ASP.NET Core fr framework. Hope you like this video. Do, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you. See you next time.